There we go. Now, now it's working. Okay. Hi there. So today, we are going to be discussing the TWAB for this week. Very interesting, to say the least. Um, so, <clears throat> yesterday we were live over on the Purple, Purple Faction. We got a very long stream last night. I was quite exhausted by the end of it because of how long we went. I think we did like 10 hours. Um, so we're going to be live again on Wednesday, on Sunday, and depending on where, what this will say, will be kind of dependent on how we go about it. So with this TWAB, let's read. What do they got? Well, the Destiny and Bioware collaboration is live. Um, preview on upcoming sandbox changes. Lunar New Year is coming up. Trials Matt voting results are in. Okay. A Destiny 2 deal at Humble Bundle. Player support and art and movie of the week. So, Bioware, you know, we got Ship, Ghost, and Sparrow for free. And then there's Armor. I mean, honestly, I'm not too big of a fan on the Armor set. On the Armor sets for the Warlock. Um, haven't looked at the other ones, but honestly, I don't see as a, myself as a fan of them. <clears throat> Sandbox updates. This is what we're really here for. On March 5th, we're getting a new update. This will include changes to across weapons and abilities, as well as some Crucible-specific ones. This is intended to set up the sandbox for success in the new PvP landscape, as well as new content coming in Into Light in April. Let's dig into the abilities. So this is coming from our combat team. So what they're specifically going to be looking at from what we're seeing here is <clears throat> they're going to look at Threaded Spectre, changes to Threadlings to make them easier to deal with in Crucible, a fix for the restoration timer extension issue, and a few corresponding changes to relevant solar fragments. A small number of ability buffs that we're pulling forward from our balance pass, pass in the final shape. So for Threaded Spectre, for those that don't know, uh, Threaded Spectre is the ability for a hunter to basically leave behind like the void uh, melee, but this, is their, this was tied to their dodge. And then by destroying that, you get... Threadlings to spawn. Um, Threat Spectre has been overperforming in high level, high level PvP activities, particularly in trials, also in competitive. Um, we believe that the two core issues that drive this overperformance. Let's talk about them separately. First, the uptime on Threat Spectre is significantly higher when we th than we think is healthy, particularly with how fast the cooldown of the Hunter's Dodge is combined with the two Threatling Grenade charges gained by Widow Silk. For update 7.35, we're implementing a change that applies to that same class ability regeneration penalty that Ensnaring Slam uses when the player creates a threat specter. So basically, it's kind of to give it like a, you know, you can't use um, Ensnaring Slam too much. They're doing the same with threat specter. We don't want this change to have a significant negative impact on threat specter's performance in PvE. So we've been reducing the duration of that regeneration penalty by 50% when in PvE activities, which also applies to Ensnaring Slam, increasing its uptime in PvE. Um, in addition, we're increasing the Threat Spectre's detonation damage versus PvE combatants to 25%, with the goal that we'll be able to create fewer Shadow Clones overall, each one will be more impactful to compensate. Ensnaring Slam reduced the ability regeneration penalty by 50% in PvE activities. Threat Spectre now applies the same class ability regeneration penalty used by Ensnaring Slam when players create a Threat Spectre. By doing that, they're increasing the Threat Spectre detonation damage by 50, by 25% in PvE. Threadlings. The other half of Threat Spectre's PvP potency comes from the Threadlings themselves. Like Axiom Bones projectiles prior to update 4.01, we believe that Threadlings are creating too difficult to clear off the battlefield. To address this, we're implementing a change to make them easier to shoot and reduce instances where it feels like your bullet went straight through the Threadling without detonating it. In addition to their potency as a distraction tool, Threadlings deal enough to chip damage to players to swiftly change the outcome of an engagement. So we're simply reducing their damage versus players, both at base and with the Thread Evolution equipped. Thread of Evolution equipped. Finally, we identified a bug where a group of Threadlings were not chain detonating as intended when they when one is destroyed, which is being fixed. Threadlings increase the aim assist shovel 
the aim assist shape size from 0.41 to 0.5. This makes aim assist more effective against them, making them easier to shoot. Reducing the damage they do to players to 35% and reducing it with threat of evolution to 3 point by 38 to 38.5. Fixed an issue where a group of Thedlings was not reliably chain detonating when one was destroyed. <clears throat> Fixed an issue where Thedlings sometimes did not play their non-damaging structure performance when destroyed by an enemy, resulting them into appearing to blip out of existence. We realize that these changes are not localized to Threadrunner and will also affect Brood Reaver potency in um, Crucible. To compensate for this, we're pulling some other buffs that were, we were originally planning to ship in Final Shape to keep the power of their overall kit roughly the same place. So with this, they'll be increasing the Arcane Needles aim assist and tracking strength, making it significantly more consistent against close to mid-range or fast-moving targets. So for Arcane Needle, increase the aim assist, the size of the cone and the, that the aim assist system uses to bend projectiles in the initial direction to 50%. Increase the fall-off to 45 meters and giving them a 5% tracking bonus and increase the tracking shape in order for it to find okay fix an issue where when uncharged melees while well, arcane needles equipped resulted in player appearing to freeze in a melee pose huh restoration and radiant updates will also bring this will the update will also bring in Restoration and Radiant keyword buffs, which currently have a number of buggy interactions with timer extensions. Most notable being the Ember of Imperion Fragment in combination with Ember of Mercy. We built a significant portion of these keywords to buff to store their timer data more safely. Restoration and Radiant fixed an issue when the maximum duration of Restoration and Radiant buffs were incorrectly stored, resulting in their buff timers resetting to their initial duration instead of their maximum when the buffet was reapplied. This also resolves similar issues with shorter restoration sources like Sunspots and with the Soul Invictus aspect. Alongside these changes, they're, they're adjusting both Empyreon and Mercy fragments. Left unchanged with the dramatically increased consistency resulting from this bug fist, these two fragments, particularly when paired together, would vastly exceed our power bar. We believe that with these changes, the experience from using these fragments, whether alone or paired, should be equivalent or better than the experience in the game right now. So now, Ember of Mercy now extends your current restoration by two sec seconds when the Fire Spite is collected. If you don't already have restoration active, collecting Fire Spite grants restoration for a two second duration. This restoration is, is increased to three seconds when Ember of Solace is increased. The maximum duration for Ember of Imperion will now be 15 seconds. Reworked uh, the duration extension granted with each solar defeat. Previously, it was only a 4 second duration regardless of the type of enemy. Now the duration varies based on the target that you kill. Defeating an elite, elite or weaker enemy will result in less time added, but defeating a champion or stronger commanders will result in a greater extension. Solar ability buffs. Um... Let's stick with solar for a bit, and in combination with the arcane needle improvements detailed above, some solar abilities are being buffed that were originally meant for final shape. For Sunbreaker Titans, uh, we are improving the consistency of, of consecration to make it better able to catch floating targets or enemies that jump too late. We're also increasing the travel distance of both Scorch Wave and the Ignition Wave, and further increasing the Ignition Wave's travel speed both with and without the Pyro Gale Gauntlets armor equipped. Consecration. Increase the travel distance of the initial gr ground follow, a projectile that travels alongside the surface like a thermite grenade or cold snap, to 20 meters. Increase the height of the slam by 1 meter and the travel distance of the, of the slam ground, the ground slam follow to 20 meters. Increase the travel distance of the, of the slam ground follow including Pyrogale's enhanced version, from 16 to 24 meters per second. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be quite interesting. Um, Gunpowder Gambo. Reduce the maximum self-damage from 144 to 80? Oh. 
Okay. These changes will come on March 5th. Okay. Weapon Sandbox. When we create the new Heavy Burst Hand Cannon sub family for Warden's Law, we inadvertently include some content that made them hard to control while playing with mouse and keyboard. Correctly corrected an issue that was causing Heavy Burst to have a 25% less aim assist than other hand cannons when hip firing or airborne on mouse and keyboard. Oh, something about bows. Um, bows continue to be hard for some players to counter in PvP. Well, yeah, it's because everyone's using La Monarch or fucking Breakneck or Hot Swapping in PvP. And that's what they do. Bows. Reduce the auto aim follow up distance, start and end by 50%. Aim assist will be less effective at long range. Reduce the, the maximum auto aim cone by 5%. Okay, that should hopefully, I mean, it's still going to make things annoying. We ship Brignick with one fewer perk than intended in the right column. Oops. Auto rifles. Adding the 12th perk, target lock, to Brignick's second trait column. Onslaught's better. I don't care about target lock. Lightweight scout rifles have had a following, but they suffered from being unforgiving when missing crits. We're making a change to reduce the proportion of crits required for optimal TTK. From four crits to three crits in the body. Lightweight scout rifles are having a base 5%. Despite being less popular than other special weapons in PvP, sniper rifles have been disproportionately oppressive to play against, particularly in 3v3. What? Oh my god. I, I fucking I hate whenever they do things to snipers. So we're nerfing their aim assist a little. Reduce the auto aim cone size by 10%. Oh, my lord. Yeah. Just take away the aim assist. Take away... Just give them more flinch. Do all that. You know? Because, you know, having a satisfying snipe is so hard. And it's so oppressive to play against. Even though, you know, you can be met by freaking fusion rifles. Have people camping with shotguns. Yeah. It makes it so oppressive to play against. In 3v3. Where your skill with a weapon, no matter how much aim assist or unflinching mods you have, they still don't work. But yeah, let's nerf it again. Oh my god. Why? Why? Why is it just so freaking hard for people to be like, oh, there's a sniper. Let's not peek. And unless you have a sniper to go up against it, yeah, no. Yeah, no, let's let's nerf it. Let's reduce the aim assist cone size by 10%. Heck, it might make hanging snipes easier if you're just a more precision shooter. Heck, because now your thing's not going to drag. Because someone happened to be, stand in front of them. Rocket launcher meta has become more set than we like with the adaptive and aggressive outperforming the rest. In PvP, really? Or are we just talk? Are we just talking about you know this? So precision and high impact rocket launchers, and then Deathbringer, Galahorn, and Truth will also have this. Increase the ammo reserves by twenty and re reduce the damage penalty by to five to under five percent. Heavy impact. Increased reserve ammo by two now deals more detonation damage and less impact for roughly the same total damage. This should make them more effective versus groups, or when gaining splash damage on the near, uh, with a target with a near miss. <laughs> okay, so they're talking specifically for freaking um this. And yes, of course. Going back to their freaking statement on snipers, they become less popular than than other special weapons. Yes, because you you've made them that way. You give them unbelievably unbelievable flinch. You freaking constantly nerf the damage to them. And now you're going to be like, we're going to reduce the, thing, the stuff. Yes, because we want to have a fucking PvP time where all we can use are shotguns and fusion rifles. That's all anyone ever wants. I just want to run up on someone and not worry about it because I have a shotgun. Or, I'm a significant distance. Here's a fusion rifle. <laughs> 
oh, but if you're, you know, someone that, you know, okay, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I can get this nice shot and everything, and then boom. Oh, well, you got flinched, or, well, you, you bodied him, and they're, they're still alive, and they can flinch you out of the, to high heaven. You know, great. It's real great. I, I love that. <sighs> we touched heavy grenade launchers a few times lately, and while they're fairly strong mathematically, it hasn't moved the needle. It's time to make some subs more substantial changes. We're pushing them in them into more sustained damage and add clear. And we're also tweaking spike grenades to make them a less dominant pick. Note that this change is not in their overall grenade launcher damage output, so we've increased the impact of damage to compensate and drag and dramatically increase, increase reserve... Bleh. Heavy grenade launchers. Increase the reserve ammo by a minimum of 6 rounds, maximum of 10, depending on the grenade launcher. Reduce spike grenade impact damage buff from 50% to 12.5. If the below changes, this reduces the total spike grenade damage buff from 8 to 3, making them less mandatory. In increase the direct him direct hit impact by 10%. Combined with the above change, this brings non-spike grenade launchers up to almost the level of spike grenade launchers and increase the detonation damage by 5. In PvP, this offset the this is offset by the reduction of detonation damage for no overall change. Waveframes have struggled to identify w with not enough ammo to really work for Aclear as addressed above. And not as much as single target standard grenade launchers. With these changes, well, they'll be able to compensate with other grenade launchers. So they're getting a damage increase in a, wa in a wave change. Caster swords are the only swords that have a significant range attack for now, and the trade-off for maintaining damage, and the trade-off for maintaining distance was damaged. This re reduction was more extreme than it needed to be, so we brought the heavy attack range damage up with other swords, while reducing the heavy attack energy cost to grant higher uptime on projectile attacks. Reduce the heavy, okay, and increased it. So now. Reduce the heavy attack energy cost of 4 and increase the heavy attack damage to 16. Exotics. Let's talk about this. Because, great. Vigwin is, is strong in PvP already, but it's fairly hard to control with how much a 5 burst round kicks, so we made it easier to compensate. Now, they'll have a better recoil pattern. Vex Mythoclast fires like a high-impact auto-rifle. Other high-impact auto-rifles have lo larger ADS damage fall-off scalers, so we increased it with, Vig with Vex to match. So it has a 1.7 ADS damage fall-off scaler. Wish Ender's True Sight is a big part of its exotic identity, so we want to retain it, but in its current form, it's too useful in P PvP, particularly strong with Oathkeeper Hunter exo exotics. No, really? True Sight will not deactivate if you leave ADS or hold it for longer than 3 seconds. To reactivate it, you must fully redraw the bow. Okay, thank you. That's good. Edge of Action Bubble wasn't intended to directly to co compete directly with Ward of Dawn, and with the Glaive changes made in Season of the Wish, we hit its health a little too hard. We wanted to make it more durable in PvP. Don't care. Matacor Mat... Manticore shipped with a unique airborne playstyle, but it's several usability issues we wanted to address, including the need for a reliable way to drop out of the air and prevent accidental activating anti-grav. So a build in PvE and synergy that builds with void overshields. Players must now be airborne for 0.5 seconds and deal damage with the weapon to activate its perk. This prevents accidental um, activation while running downstairs or doing small jumps. We gave a special reload to quickly disengage anti-graph thrusters. Swapping, swapping weapons will continue to disengage as well. Terraba also re receives this special reload animation. When anti-grav is thrusters are engaged, the commands will be less accurate when targeting the player, similar to the way commands will be less accurate when targeting the player, similar to the always on time sparrow. Uh-huh. With the catalyst, final blows, 
and, and sustain damage with the Manticore, while Airborne will grant a Void Overshield and return ammo to the magazine. Great. Players enjoy the new grenade launcher for delivering the Boomer Knight Fantasy, but ultimately wasn't hitting hard enough in PvE to be a top-tier perk. Unfortunately, this was easy to progress by bumping up the damage and rate of fire. Right. Perks Heal Clip now grants two, cure to, two stacks of cure to the player while granting one stack to, to your allies. Trench Barrel can now be activated by dealing damage with ranged melee attacks. Barrel Constrictor was fairly experimental, so we shifted it in a constrained state. We were moving some of those limits. Once activated, it no longer deactivates upon firing a shot. It lasts for 7.5 seconds, and it buffs all shots fired during that time. The enhanced one will do for 8.5. Loose change is strong in the in you know, PvE subclass, but wasn't particularly interesting in PvP. So applying subclass 3.0 debuffs now grants 20% aim assist and reduces 20% um, reduce ADS movement speed penalty in addition to ex existing 50 uh, reload stat. Applying another debuff now refreshes the duration too. Dual loader, just get rid of it. Remove the reload speed penalty, changing the wording to the perk description to make clear, and that increases the number of shots reloaded, so we can now apply with other weapon types for without confusion. Text man, uh, yeah, don't care, don't care, don't care about these. Target lock now activates later in the magazine for SMGs at 20% instead of 12.5, so the damage buff will swing primary gunfights less often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mods. Bonus damage against mini bosses should have been part of boss spec, not major spec, so we're updating that. But no shit. In the final ship, we'll be rebalancing many weapons types in PvE, buffing unperforming, and leaving the most high performers untouched. Since we're looking at PvE weapon tuning anyway, of course, over the final shape, we'll be. Looking at weapon mods that feel mandatory and intend to make changes to in, uh, increase player choice in PvE. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's just take a look at these changes they want. Player health. We have two goals in increasing to follow, with the following increase to player health. Gives us far more generally granule to balance our current and future sandbox elements and lets us decrease wait no, 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 no. these symptoms are all generated are all generated by a handful of root causes which is generally linked to the others in a cycle of balance and encourage us to keep them in touch we have certain ability builds in either high uptime or higher potency than we believe is healthy. To help keep those builds in check, we provide a near constant availability special ammo, which means there's a surplus of one. And to keep primary weapons competitive, we made primary weapons highly lethal and fast killing. All that leads to a high percentage of deaths in our sandbox where, from our player's perspective, it feels like there's nothing they could have done differently. Simply put, we have a risk versus reward problem. Over time, we push some of our sandbox uh, elements to have higher rewards without upsetting them the risk of pun punishing sub-optimal play. Some of the elements take it a step further. Instead of rewarding the attacker, they punish the target. Example, explosive payload, hand cannon flinch, or wish under truth sight. To address these, we're making following changes to the Crucible starting on March 5th. Um, player health will, will be increased by 30% in base Crucible, so players have 100 health up from 70 and 116 and 130 depending on the player's resilience values. So now resilience is going to matter to your health. You're going to have 130 shield if you have like the top end on top of having 100 health. Ability cooldowns. <clears throat> These values combined with the changes to the mod economy earlier this season will help us place where ability uptime is healthier for the Crucible. 
Grenade, melee, and class ability cooldowns will now have a 50% penalty applied to them in Crucible only. Super cooldowns will now have a 20% uh, penalty applied to them in Crucible only. Ability damage to make account for the increase in player health and reduced uptime. Or make some general changes to both melee and super energy. And one grenade to make sure that we maintain moment-to-moment mo uh, -moment muscle memory. And retain our general rules of most super ki killing in one shot. And most melees killing in two. So, for supers, increase the base super damage to 31%. So supers that have the ability to kill will be able to kill when they need to. Increase the, me the base melee damage by 16. And increase the arc flux grenade damage by 16. To maintain the, the same optimal TTK at, as the current sandbox with the new HP values... And to be placed an emphasis on precision, all primary weapons except bows will have their critical hit damage increase, or also reduce the flinch dealt by hand cannons as they were a consistent outlier, even when compared to other high damage primaries like scouts and bows. Okay. Um, pulse rifles, auto rifles, sidearms, and scout rifles have an increased hit damage of 14%. Hand cannons have an increased crit damage by 10% and reduced body shot damage by 5%. Reduce the flinch to players by projectile impact by 12.5% and by explosive payload by 10%. Some machine guns reduce body shot damage and increase crit damage. Bows reduce base damage. Special Annual Acquisitions After a lengthy test period in, cru in Crucible Labs, we are ready to move the Special Ammo Meter system into a wider Crucible. We have made several changes to the initial version. Sorry about that. I forgot I had something going. Um, special stuff, you know. Trace rifles, shotguns, and fusion rifles have a will have a base increase. Oh, great. Kills with special ammos and heavy weapons do not grant any points towards the special ammo meter. Jumping off the map will subtract progress. Ammo is not dropped on death, and you will not lose special ammo you've earned when you are defeated or are revived. Earned special ammo will carry over between rounds. Swapping to a double primary builds to a special one will reset your special cooldown progress. Okay. Decrease the charge beam damage against players by 15. Yeah, that was getting annoying. Reduce flinch dealt to players by projectile impact. Forerunner increased damage versus players to 20%. So Forerunner might be coming back. Lunar New Year. Uh, trials map. Yeah. Dead Cliffs will be the trials map. The Humble Bundle. New form stuff. Game to give rewards. And a whole bunch of other stuff. And all that. So, wow, that's interesting at least. So, Red Faction, I will see you guys if you come into the Purple Faction this coming Sunday. If not, I will see you maybe soon. We'll see. Have a good one, y'all.